Budget 2009, brought to you by Deloitte. The central goals of economic policy remain accelerating growth and job creating, uh, creation, broadening economic participation and reducing poverty. Progress in these areas will be more difficult over the period ahead. Policy adjustments need to reinforce macroeconomic stability in the context of a deteriorating international environment and provide a temporary cushion to the domestic economy. Lower inflation in the months ahead should contribute to moderating interest rates. I'm not trying to decide for the highly and strongly willed independent reserve bank. I'm merely making an economic observation, Mr. President. Under the leadership of President Butlante, a task team comprising of business, organized labor and community organizations with government has been convened to agree on an appropriate South African response to the current crisis. Chaired by the Chief Executive of NEDLAC, Mr. Herbert Mkise, this initiative is rightly focused on both the immediate response required and on our longer-term policy goals. Madam Speaker, I've already alluded to the five principles that have informed our budget planning this year, protecting the poor, creating employment, investing in infrastructure, promoting competitiveness, and fiscal sustainability. Kitanda ukusho futi ngiti. Sifuna ukuvikela abampo fu. Sifuna ukudala amatuba emsibenz. Ukututukiza ingala sisinda. Tutukiza ezuwebo nomto. Ukusimama kwesimo sesimali. It's okay, Mr. Ellis. I'm just repeating what I said in English. Don't worry. <laughs> the largest adjustments to spending plans go to poverty reduction. 25 billion rand is added to the budgets of provinces, mainly for education and health care. and 13 billion rand for social assistance grants in the administration. 4 billion rand is added to the school nutrition program and 2.5 billion goes to municipalities for basic services. But Madam Speaker, the amount of money allocated to these programs is unfortunately not what provides relief. No, we can only be satisfied when we know that the quality of life of the poor is improving, that children are being properly educated, that learners have access to food in schools, that mothers visiting clinics get proper and dignified treatment, that the criminal justice system putting those who rob and thieve behind bars. It's what the money buys that matters. And so fixations about the size of deficits or surpluses are illusory detours. Let us focus on what matters. And secondly, greater effort is needed to accelerate employment growth. Madam Speaker, Honourable Members, Government will and must work with business and organised labour to protect work opportunities and accelerate skills development over the period ahead. Additional funding over the medium term will go to the Working for Water and Working on Fire programmes, and a billion rand goes to the Msubomvu Youth Fund. Three point seven billion Rand is added for low income housing projects and four point one billion Rand is set aside for the second phase of the expanded public works program. 
But honorable members, as we deal with the issue of training, let's pause and remind ourselves that the program that is probably the wealthiest in all of what we do is called the Skills Development Fund. It exists as a payroll levy and there are huge amounts of unspent money and even where the money is spent, we cannot look ourselves in the mirror and say it buys the quality improvements in the labor force that it needs. We raise this not in order to support the DA, but because we treasure the contribution of working people and the ability of working people to continually improve their skills in this economy. It's a desire, the dream of every worker in South Africa. I do propose that the participating departments provinces and municipalities in the expanded public works program be challenged to exceed their targets for creating expanded public works programs over the period ahead. And so the contingency reserve must have put in it a little envelope that says to those who create jobs more money will be provided. And hopefully the incoming administration will make a note of this and be able to take this forward in the adjustment appropriation later this year. <laughs> Building our capacity to grow is the third thrust of our spending plans. It is reflected in the government's 787 billion rand infrastructure investment plans and is a cornerstone of our developmental contract with business, organized labor and other social partners. In this budget, a further 6.4 billion rand is added for public transport, roads and rail networks, 4.1 billion rand for school buildings, clinics and other provincial infrastructure programs, and 5.3 billion rand for municipal infrastructure and bulk water systems. Major investments in power generation, transport networks and telecommunications are in progress building an environment within which run, uh, mining and industrial development, tourism and our services economy will prosper, even if the short-term outlook is not as rosy as we'd like it to be. <coughs> Fourthly, a time of restructuring is an opportunity to address regulatory and microeconomic barriers to our competitiveness. This involved detailed sectoral analysis and ongoing consultation with affected industries and interest groups it is the key to sustain faster long-term growth. In this budget, 1.6 billion rand is added to industrial development and small enterprise support programs, and 1.8 billion rand goes to rural development and small farmer support. I need to check whether the gentleman from Kala is listening to me. One point eight billion rand for rural development and small farmer support. Mr. Mantash. <laughs> A further one billion rand is added for electricity demand management, together with tax incentives for investments in energy efficient technologies. The, the, the new automotive production and development program includes a production subsidy which receives 870 million rand over the next three years. Additional funding also goes to consumer protection, the competition authorities and enhanced testing capacity of the South African Bureau of Standards.